private military company Wagner first came to prominence in Ukraine in 2014, initially working in cooperation with the Russian army during the annexation of Crimea, then fighting alongside pro-Russian separatist forces in the Donbas region in eastern Ukraine. Current Wagner leader Prigozhin claims to have single-handedly assembled the group of patriots in May 2014. Yevgeny Prigozhin himself is a former convict who achieved legitimate business success in the food service industry in St. Petersburg in the 90s. Known as Putin's chef, he developed a close relationship with the Russian president, a fellow son of St. Petersburg, and was awarded lucrative contracts for military catering and school meals. Funds from these contracts appear to have been poured into the Internet Research Agency, a company focused on online propaganda and pro-Russia internet campaigns that the Mueller report alleged to have interfered in the 2016 American presidential election. In his surprising new spirit of transparency, Prigozhin openly admitted to this in November. The Wagner Group never ceased operations in Ukraine, with Ukraine's SBU security services describing their involvement with incidents such as the downing of a transport aircraft that killed 40 paratroopers, but over the next few years its activity expanded all over the world. It operates as a shadowy network, a financial and political spiderweb that allows the Kremlin to carry out operations of various kinds without the threat of repercussion. At this point, we must also note that private military companies are entirely illegal in Russia. Beginning with Syria in 2015, the Wagner Group's activities typically involve the support of autocratic regimes through muscle brutality and propaganda in exchange for access to resources, particularly mining operations, as well as political support against the West. Wagner's most brutal and extensive operations have taken place across Africa, particularly in Mali and the Central African Republic. In March 2022, the Malian Armed Forces and Wagner Group volunteers carried out a massacre in the town of Mura, where, according to the Human Rights Watch, over 300 civilians were killed. There have also been reports of similar violence in the Central African Republic, where around 1,000 Wagner mercenaries have been stationed since 2018. Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 has led to a complete transformation in how both PMC Wagner and its now-recognized leader Prigozhin operate. According to the Times, more than 400 mercenaries were flown into Ukraine in January 2022 with the goal of assassinating Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. The failure and inadequacies of the Russian armed forces, however, meant the Wagner Group troops soon found themselves fighting alongside regular soldiers in Ukraine. In order to increase record numbers, Prigozhin embarked on a whistle-stop tour of Russia's prison, reaching as many as he could with patriotic rhetoric and lofty promises. He promised full amnesty in exchange for six-month tours of service and spoke passionately about fighting and possibly dying for the motherland. Unsurprisingly, thousands signed up. According to the Russian NGO Russia Behind Bars, 50,000 prisoners have been recruited to the front. However, despite Prigozhin's patriotic promises, these recruits are poorly trained, poorly equipped, and generally viewed as expendable cannon fodder. Of those 50,000, only 10,000 remain that have not been killed or captured, or have not deserted. Prigozhin is an incredibly aggressive critic of Russia's military establishment and disdains Valery Gerasimov, chief of Russia's general staff, and defense minister Sergei Shoigu. He has even publicly defended the rights of Russians to criticize military commanders. In February 2023, he accused the military of treason over a lack of ammunition supplied to his troops. Just days before, Prigozhin claimed that he'd been prevented from recruiting convicts by the Defense Ministry as a way of undermining PMC Wagner. 
This perhaps indicates that Prigozhin may not have the ear of the president in the same way as he did a few months ago. This change of fortunes is likely related to Gerasimov's appointment as sole commander of operations in January, supplanting the Prigozhin sympathetic Surovikin. Yevgeny Prigozhin and private military company Wagner are therefore in a curious position. They are more visible than ever, but also perhaps more vulnerable than ever, with their fate intertwined completely with the success of Russian operations in Ukraine. But that has not stopped Prigozhin from planning for the future. In March, he claims that he aims to recruit 30,000 new fighters by the middle of May with recruitment centers opening in 42 cities and reports of recruitment sessions taking place in high schools and gyms. The Wagner Group has opened a center for military technology in St. Petersburg, where a so-called Wagnerionok, Wagner-friendly youth club, was launched at the start of 2023. It seems like the Wagner Group's time as a visible political force in Russia may only just be beginning. At the same time, however, Bloomberg reports that mercenary group is likely to turn away from the war in Ukraine and shift their focus back toward Africa as a result of Prigozhin's feud with top military commanders who have gained the favor of the president at Prigozhin's expense. As such, the Wagner Group's future is as clouded and full of shadows as its past.